Hi, everybody. This is Alan Fine, and I'm here with Kira Sugru, who's the head of festivals at Falcha, Ireland, based in Dublin. She's here in Manhattan with us, and we're going to talk about Global Irish Festival and what's going on in Ireland on Insider Travel Report. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, thanks, Alan. I'm delighted to be here. So um, we are aware of all of the marketing that Ireland does, uh, and it's for general population, but this is very specific. This is very cultural. This is very personal. Let's talk about what this is. So it's the Global Irish it's Festival the Series. Global Irish Festival higher. Series. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's better. Uh -huh. um, and it's, look, it's, it's really aimed at the diaspora market, and, you know, with so many people who claim Irish heritage. It's, it's a program that at this time post COVID, where people really felt that, that you know, absence of friends, family, and the absence of connection, this is really about reconnection. And it's about going back, back home and that sense of home. And even if that might be three, four, five generations, there's still an element of home. And this is a series of festivals that will take place. And they're all where? They're across the Wild Atlantic Way, which is along the west coast of Ireland. Um, it's, it's Ireland's, it's, it's a, a coastal um, trail right along the west coast of Ireland. So for this series of festivals, we have it in four counties, um, which is Donegal, Limerick, Kerry and Mayo. And um, they will, yeah, I nearly forgot one there. Yeah, you know, you're, you're in my lips. <laughs> I know, I'm looking at you, oh gosh. Um, but it's, it's, it's really exciting. But, you know, and the idea behind this is really to try and really help that reconnection. And I suppose for the communities within these counties as well, they're so excited to be welcoming back friends and family um, throughout the, the festivals in each of these areas, which are happening in, in from May, May and then October. mostly September, October. Right. So a little bit off season mm -hmm. and airfares, etc. better prices, hotels. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to travel. Um, and they're really about, the communities are so excited about really trying to reconnect. Well, and, they, and they want to uh, put together programs that will really interest people all around music and food, but also about tracing your family roots. Like, you know. Well, let's dig deeper and chronologically. So the first one yeah. I'm showing is uh, May 1st to May 31st in Mayo. Correct. And well, what's happening there? So Mayo is having a series of events and uh, a big part of that will be the genealogy and tracing your roots. They also are going to have a festival of the islands, which are the islands off of Mayo. And there'll be, um, uh, I suppose, a lot of people won't have discovered the islands. They don't know about that. And it's something additional to do. But there's a lot of other arts, music festivals, traditional Irish music. What is the scattering and the gathering? I'm curious. The, the scattering and the gathering is around the islands. Oh, and it's, that. yeah, and that, that's exactly, it's around the islands. And where the cycle circus? Um, that is around a circus event that will be in um, Clifton. And then I think they're going to go bring it to some other towns around the county as well. So it's very, it, well, it's very earthy, everything I'm hearing. Yeah, and it, look, at, it's, it's also, I think, a really important part. This is really that engagement with the people who live there. And I think that that's what people remember. They really love that engagement. Um, and I suppose when you have events and you have people gathering through, you know, for music events or whatever, that really lends itself to a much richer experience for everybody involved. And I suppose that's part of what this festival is. Let's move on to the next one is Donegal, and that's uh, uh, the t September. Yes, so Donegal um, is having its festival over a number of days at the end of September. And um, they're going to have a lot of tours and trails around the county. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's really, I suppose, um, showcasing the, the county to, to remind people, I suppose, um, of their heritage and the beautiful scenery. I mean, Donegal is just spectacular. 
but there's also a number of arts, music, music events, um, performances. Uh, there will be special events happening throughout the museums. There's genealogy events, again, helping people to trace their roots. And the idea is that some of the tours would be based around that. So you might find that well, you literally you have the, it's in our DNA. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And um, you know, they, there's there's things where they you know they might find out that their grandparents came from Lifford or or whatever, and they can do tours that will bring them to those areas. So it's it's um, it's really just trying to deepen that that connection with uh, Donegal. And then, of course, the, the highlight is the Tip O'Neill Diaspora Awards. And um, they are held annually, but they haven't been held for the last number of years due to COVID. And um, these are special awards um, that are given to extraordinary people who have, who have reconnected with Donegal. Um, so it's it's a very big event there, and of course it's it's in memory and in honor of the famous Tip O'Neill. Speaker of the and House. There's so much that you can't even remember. There's a film festival. <laughs> there's a chorus that's at sunrise that sounds right, fabulous. The chorus is uh, going to be a beautiful a carnival, event. spectacular with yep. sculptures. So there's a lot going on. Now we're moving to Limerick. Limerick. And that's when. Uh, Limerick is kicking off uh, the kind of la mid, end of mid to late September. Mid to late September, but it's going to run right through to the end of October. So they kind of have a five to six week uh, program of events. And uh, it's kicking off with Culture Night, which is a night where all attractions, um, museums, everything is open free all night for anybody to enter. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then there's there's a big food festival called Pig Town. Oh, I love that name. How did it get that name? Yeah, it got its name from uh, Limerick is very well known for its uh, history in the bacon and ham industry. Right. And um, I think at one time it wasn't the nice thing to call it, and now we love no, it. Oh, and I right? think it, it was Pig yeah, Town. You, you're a pig town. We are, yes, we are. Yes, yeah. we're proud. That's right. And it would have been, yeah, it would have been kind of something people look down on. Yeah, and but not um, no, no, not now. And it's it's a really thriving industry still in the area. And um, with recognition in terms of its quality and the f quality of the food uh, right across Europe as being, um, you know, a really superior product. Um, so, but Pigtown's a lot of fun. It's it's all about fun, ex ex experiencing way more than than pork products, let's say. Um, so it's it's um, there's a Pigtown parade right. where they parade right through the streets with this very giant. Right pig um, but very what pink else? and yes yeah. um, the markets area has all sorts of food special um, uh, guest chefs and um, you know tastings and oh. exhibition you know and, and demonstrations and all of that but also the, a lot of the local restaurants get involved mm. so they put on special um, menus um, you know and it's set prices um, and fun things fun cocktails you know pig town cocktails and all that kind of thing so it's just a bit of fun all of that mm. and and not to be a footnote rugby yeah they well you know they 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 claim they, to be the home of rugby in yeah. in um in limerick yeah. and there is a new museum of of rugby opening in right in the city center in limerick and that's opening during this period as well oh, and it's going to be the spirit of rugby mm -hmm. which of course for any rugby players mm -hmm. it's very much about the spirit of the game and that's a really important part of rugby um and of course there is thoman park which is the famous ground of munster rugby who are um you know they're there's well they they, they say they're the best supporters in the world. They, they, uh, it's real passion and pride. Sure. Um, so yes, so that's going to be happening also. I jazz think. festival. There's also a there's jazz more. festival yes. for a weekend yeah. there, and um, that's that's um, becoming really popular. <clears throat> and um, it's funny because um, people wouldn't necessarily associate Ireland with jazz, and yet there's huge links between jazz and Irish music. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of mixing. So you go to a jazz session, you might have someone there, you know, playing mm -hmm. an Irish instrument to go along with the jazz. So it's oh, a really kind of fun, different yeah. experience. And then finally, we would have the Richard Harris yes. Film Festival. Oh, and of course, Richard Harris, famous for so many movies. Um, and I suppose most recently famous for his role in the Harry Potter films. Um, 
Uh, he was from Limerick, very proud Limerick man. Um, and this film festival is will be in its 10th year and is very much, um, I suppose, to honor him and the contribution that he gave to um, film and inspired so many people in Limerick to become involved with film. Uh, so much so that some local people have developed a major studios in Limerick who have succeeded in uh, now being a centre for um, and a location for filming for Netflix series and some Apple TV series. So it, you know, Richard Harris actually influenced a lot of that um, through his work. But I suppose the essence of the film festival is, again, it's focused on fun. That there's a lot of, uh, they, they, they invite people to submit film under a lot of different genres. And then they have a whole panel and then they show and screen some of the winning ones. Um, and there's everything from comedy to documentary sure, to, sure. Um, and we get, we get entries from right across the world. So it's, it's um, and there's a lot of links between um, the Richard Harris Film Festival now and the Film Festival in Monaco, um, the Newport Beach Festival, the Toronto Film Festival. So there's a lot of links going sure. backwards and forwards. And it's, we've got a lot of guests coming from them. Uh, so it's it's actually really interesting, and a lot of younger people are particularly interested because the range of films involved. But there's a lot of fun events in the evening centered around maybe pubs, and mm -hmm. um, there's a big awards night, <laughs> which is a uh, you know it's it's a red carpet awards night. It's a little mini Oscars sure. um, for um, international film, it, all happening in Limerick. Now, don't let your clients go home because the very next week is the fourth one of these, which is where? Correct, in County Kerry. Yeah. And it's right across the whole county. Yeah. So there's events happening um, like the Dingle Food Festival, which is a very well established food festival, as well as events happening in Tralee, but also in a lot of smaller towns and villages. And they're going to have a lot of pop-up events. Um, which are going to move around the county. There's going to be um, Irish, like GAA, Irish uh, football and hurling uh, exhibition games, mm -hmm. um, and people can try their hand at playing. Mm -hmm. um, they're also going to have a lot of music events. Music is really strong in Kerry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and film again. And, and film again, yeah. There's a, there's a whole film festival piece to it as well. and. Um, there's a, a, a animation is particularly strong. There's a, a whole dingle animation piece uh, to the festival. Um, and as you get to at the end of the month, what happens? Uh, October. Well, if they're lucky enough to be able to stay till the end of the month or can travel for the last week in October, of course, we have our Halloween celebrations. And many people don't realize this, but Halloween actually originates in Ireland. And we have um, had centuries of celebrations of Halloween, which was known as Samhain, which was the old Celtic um, word, which, which really was around celebrating the harvest. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there was all of the stories around All Souls Day, where people you know, could get in touch, and the whole Halloween story. And I could talk to you all night about this, but we'll have to do a separate thing on, on the whole Halloween story because it's so exciting. But we have, um, uh, the, there is part of the festival in Kerry will include a Samhain festival, but across the whole of Ireland, um, you know, there is, there is the association of Samhain and the origin of Halloween um, being in Ireland and we have another festival which takes place uh, called the Puka Festival which is dedicated to telling the stories of the origin of Halloween and the characters how did we how did we end up doing trick-or-treat um, why do we carve pumpkins um, and all of those stories and all of that's answered in these origin stories these are wonderful little towns, these counties, I should say. These are counties that are off the, the necessary beaten trail, uh, especially if your clients have seen Dublin uh, um, or Belfast. This, this, is, this is where they should be going. Yeah, that, that, that is exactly it. 
and I'm I'm sure I'm not doing it justice. There's going to be lots more added to these programs as the programs develop. Um, so look, I think it's a really good time for the travel, particularly in the off, as I say, in that off peak, because they get really great value for money. Um, <clears throat> so thank you, and um, thank you. Uh, I think this has been a great opportunity. Thank you. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.